Good morning. And welcome to our outdoor worship service from the uh, Sidman Methodist Church, both here and in person. Uh, we will begin today with our announcements. Let's see here where we are. Uh, Sidman, we do not have any announcements for today. Uh, looking ahead, um, Monday which would be tomorrow, Bible study at Beaverdale at 7 p.m. Tuesday, there's a Bible study at Dunlow at 11 a.m. And then uh, we're looking already into August. So you can see there, August 8th is our next uh, event, I guess you would call it, the second annual Circuit Riders service. That's where we go to all three churches. We will start at Dunlow at 9 a.m. for prayers, 10 a.m. then at Beaverdale for the sermon, and 11 a.m at Sidman for communion, followed by a covered dish dinner, and our guest pastor will be Reverend Randy Bain. And then following that is on the um, August 10th, Beaverdale's Community Days. Are there any other announcements? And I do believe if anyone needs lunch or supper today or this week, there is still one bag of pierogies left in the uh, freezer in the church. Is that everybody? Everything? Okay. All right. Uh, the candles are lit, whether or not you can see that in this uh, in the sunlight here. And uh, if you will join in our opening hymn in the garden, number 425. talents he did not give me the singing talent he gave that to my nieces and my nephew but there is one place that I will always sing because I figure if God doesn't like it he'll change it he hasn't yet so if you're ever singing near me <laughs> just ignore me and blame it on God because I keep saying I keep singing here in church and you haven't changed it so it mustn't be as bad as what I'm hearing in my own ear or he just doesn't care 
It, okay, a joyful noise, thank you. He gave the singing ability to my nieces and my nephew, and he gave me a joyful noise, which if you also just make a joyful noise, just sing it loud and clear, because if he doesn't like it, he'll change it, and if he doesn't mind it, it's his way. They say singing is praising twice, so we'll see. I don't know. Uh, if uh, we will join in the responsive reading, which is Psalm 24, and that can be found in your... Bible on page 473. So 473, this is Psalm 24 of David, a psalm. And if you'll just join with me. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? who may stand in his holy place, the one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. They will receive blessings from the Lord and vindication from God and their Savior. Such is a generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, your gates. Be lifted up your ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates. Lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. Now, we don't have children here today, but... It's almost a good thing because we like to keep our kids shielded from what's happening in the world because it's not a good place. It's a scary place. So my message today was more for the adults, but I was going to try to disguise it to the children uh, as I did as for 33 years of teaching, hide them from what's real because what's real can be pretty ugly. But in light of what happened yesterday, Regardless of what side of the political field you're on, it doesn't matter. What happened yesterday was horrible. And what I was going to tell the kids was, what's an emotion? An emotion is something you feel. What do we do with emotions? We react. When we were training our horse, we were told, you want to teach the horse to respond, not react. When a horse reacts, they kick, they bite. It's always negative. You want to teach a horse to respond. You want them to see what happened, look at what happened, and then say, what should I do that's logical, that's going to keep me safe and those around me safe? But emotions don't let us do that. Usually emotions, we react. We get angry, we strike out verbally or physically. We get sad, we stomp, we scream, we cry. We blame others. We get happy. Of course, we dance. We do whatever we do when we're happy. And seeing all of everything that happened yesterday, and all the tweets and all the, everything that went on, and the, the one that really got me this morning was the one from the, a, a Mississippi staffer that said, next time, don't miss. It was quickly taken down. But again, regardless of what side you're on, that is never the proper response. And so I was going to tell the kids, you know, give me some emotions. And they were going to say, happy, sad, scared, mad, whatever. And with each one I was going to say, and how do you respond when you're sad? I cry. How do you respond when you're angry? I hit something, I scream. How do I respond when I'm happy? I dance around. And I was going to tell the kids, there's a magic response to everything that is a, not a response, it, it's, a re, it's a response, not a reaction. We react, we get ourselves into trouble, we respond, we think clearly and then come up with a solution. There is one response to absolutely every emotion in every situation. You don't get an immediate result from that response. But it is the one response we need to respond to everything with, whether it's happy, sad, angry, hurt, confused, and that response is prayer. 
You pray when you're happy through thankfulness. Thank you, God. Not, whoo, glad I missed that deer. No, it should be, thank you, Lord, I missed that deer. I don't have a car bill. When we're angry, when I saw what happened, I thought, doesn't matter who it was, that's horrid. It should have been prayer. Dear Lord, thank you that it missed him. Dear Lord, be with that family for grief that it didn't miss that person, that they're all now suffering. The response needs to be prayer, regardless. Sadness. Dear Lord, why'd you do this to me? He didn't do it to us. He puts us through tests. We don't get it. But the answer should always be prayer. Dear Lord, I don't understand. Help me understand. Help me get through it. Help me at the end, when we're all hopefully caught up yonder, to say, can you explain it, God? Maybe he can. He can. Maybe he'll choose not to. And he'll just say, keep the faith. We don't know. But regardless of where you stand, politically, socially, emotionally, with your family, with your friends, that's your answer. So let's say a little prayer. Dear Lord, we're all children of you. Whether we're the little ones that sit on the stage, waiting for the candy, and maybe gleaning a little bit of information, or whether we're the adults that sit back and hope that we're raising our children properly, help us to remember the answer is always you. The answer is always prayer. We know we're not always going to get a response, and we know that our reaction to that is anger. But always bring us back to the prayer. Remind us that when we don't get that immediate reaction or response from you, continue to pray, don't lose the faith. Lord, hold our country in your hands. Please move it in the correct direction and keep all of us safe and keep us in the faith. Amen. <clears throat> now we have a gratitude towards God. Good morning, everybody. Beautiful morning this morning. Thank you, Annette, for that. And does anybody have something that they're grateful to God for this week that they want to tell us? Yes, Colleen. I found out I'm going to be a Mimi. You're going to be a Mimi. Congratulations. <laughs> How soon? Do Oh, congratulations. Thank That's you. great. <laughs> Anybody else? No? <laughs> I have one. Oh, okay. I missed a deer the other day. <laughs> That's right. We're talking about the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thankful for that. Me too, honey. <laughs> Anyone else? Oh, Matt and the girls made it to Honduras safely. They're having a good time. That's they great. <laughs> How long will they be gone, Colleen? Um, they're coming back on Wednesday. Well, on Wednesday, okay, okay. That's great. We'll keep them, keep them in our prayers. And now uh, let us pray. Dear Lord, search us, O God, and know our hearts. You are the resurrection and the life. Forgive us, Lord, for our sins. Thank you for your great love for each and every one of us. Dear Lord, we offer prayers for the unbelievers for all those who protect us from harm, especially our own First Lieutenant Carl Smith. We pray for our youth, our church, community, and our country. We pray for good health and well-being for all the members of this con excuse me, con congregation and their families. Now, dear Lord, if there was a name that came to the people while we were praying, let them say that name out loud. Dave. Dave. Morris. Ryan. Dear Lord, you heard the cries of the people raising names so you can hear them, so you can answer the prayers they are seeking to be answered. Now let us bring our prayer time to a close by praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, and now, do we have a favorite hymn? <laughs> I just opened it up and there it was. <laughs> <laughs> That's I think I've got it right. Okay. Okay, and we're going to be reading today from Mark chapter 6, verses 14 through 29. Let's see if I... King Herod heard about this, for Jesus' 